guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about how you can remain inspired and regularly produce content on your online platforms. These days, if you're an author, then that means you're also an entrepreneur. Your days may be spent pitching to magazines, revising articles for publication, researching and maintaining an online presence through things like blog posts, YouTube videos and social media. You may even have a podcast. In terms of social media, the pressure to produce daily content is immense. Of course, you don't have to spend hours producing this content. No one is expecting you to solve all the world's problems in 280 characters. You can post pictures of you walking your dog in the park or an image of your workstation followed by the hashtag mwriting. In terms of articles, videos and blog posts, again, the content doesn't have to be revolutionary, but at the same time, it shouldn't be hollow. If you notice that your content has started to become repetitive, or if you're starting to see it as a chore, then your readers are going to start dropping off. The pressure to consistently produce content can be a little overwhelming, and there will be days where you struggle to produce. On those cold days, I hope that you will find some inspiration or at least direction in the following suggestions. Tip number one is to read other blogs. This may seem obvious, but we don't always do what is obvious, do we? If you're struggling to come up with an idea for a blog, have a look at some of the recent or not so recent topics covered on some of the blogs that you follow. By taking a little time to peruse other blogs, you will likely come up with a broader range of ideas than if you'd simply tried to generate something from your own uninspired mindset. Alternatively, you can simply take the title or topic of a post that you find interesting and write your own version. For example, you may come across an article about how to pitch ideas to magazines. You may have never covered this topic before, but you know quite a bit about it. Maybe you can write an advice piece covering the do's and don'ts of pitching. Alternatively, you may come across a fresh or innovative article that inspires you to write a response piece. For instance, you might read Mark Mason's blog about shit sandwiches and realize that you've had your own coming to Jesus moment about life, responsibilities, happiness, and the various pros and cons of adulting. Great, now go write that article. Tip number two, muse about something that has been bothering you. This is the avenue I personally tend to wander down. Writers tend to be ponderers. We like to reflect not only on our own opinions of world affairs, politics, social and environmental and cultural happenings, but also about our own lives, our behaviours, beliefs and the human condition. It's a bit of a chicken or the egg scenario. Do people with critical and reflective minds naturally gravitate towards writing as a way to express the ideas, connections and ponderings that keep them awake at night? Or does one develop the necessary skill of observation and deep thinking after they have awoken one morning and announced, I'm going to be a writer. How do I do that? The muse, snickering from her position on a chase lounge in the corner, answers, In my ethereal opinion, I recommend that you pay close attention to everyone and everything. Take the time to notice the nuances and details of life. Then spend a disturbing amount of time thinking about all that you have seen and asked yourself, what does that really mean? <laughs> Sorry, got a little bit sidetracked there. Anyway, I think you get the point. If you're a writer, chances are you have a lot of opinions, observations, interests or reflections just waiting to be shared. Of course, if you've got an established brand on your platform, say a writing blog, then that platform may not be the best place to publish your political, environmental, mindful or cake-loving pieces. Fortunately, there are many places on the World Wide Web where you can publish that content, so get to it. Step number three, start a blog series. This is another one I personally use. I started the Standard Writers Interrogation List a few years ago after noticing that writers are always asked the same types of questions. These questions range from the basic, are you a pantser or a plotter, to the more meaningful, why do you write? Series are great for a couple of reasons. If you've been blogging for a while, then you will have noticed that all of your web traffic goes to your most recent post. By starting a series, 
you can include the links to earlier posts within that series and redirect your readers to other content on your site. If you're going to start a series, I recommend picking something that has a broad scope. For example, how-to posts and listicles are great as they provide a set structure while also giving plenty of wiggle room in terms of content. Of course, you can be more specific by focusing on umbrella topics like editing, publishing or craft. Though topics like book titles or copyright are very interesting, the scope is too narrow for a series. These types of topics work much better as one-off posts. Suggestion number four is to interview someone. Interviews are a great way to quickly broaden the content of your blog without jeopardizing your brand or online voice. Of course, you want to interview someone who is in alignment with your brand. If you have a writing blog, for example, you may want to consider interviewing authors or professionals from the industry. Ideally, an interview should be both educational and inspirational. When interviewing someone, there are a few things you should be aiming for. Firstly, you need to establish your interviewee as an authority on the topic. You can do this by asking questions about their current role, their experience in the industry or their education, or by asking them for their backstory. Secondly, you need to ask open-ended questions. That is, questions that don't have a yes or no response. The aim here is to get the interviewee talking. Think of your questions more as prompts. It's really not that important that the interviewee answers your questions specifically. What you're trying to do is encourage them to talk freely about their experiences and their insider knowledge about the industry. If you don't have any experience with interviewing, the simplest way to become familiar with this art form is to listen to podcasts. I highly recommend The Creative Pen and The Rich Roll Podcast. The Creative Pen is about writing, publishing, and book marketing. And The Rich Roll Podcast is about entrepreneurship, health, fitness, nonfiction writing, and inspiration. In terms of finding someone to interview, I recommend starting with your existing network. Do you have any writer friends that would be interested or open to doing an interview? Have you met any industry professionals through either mentorships or conferences that you've attended to and that you built a rapport with? Look towards the connections and relationships that you already have before you start flicking out cold emails to strangers, which FYI, I don't recommend unless you have a very established online presence. And if you do, hi, welcome to my channel, how are you doing? There you have it guys, those are my four strategies for producing online content regularly. If you enjoyed this vlog or you have any tips of your own, please feel free to leave a comment or give a thumbs up. Know that you can always check out my website, taraeast.com. If you sign up for my weekly newsletter, you'll receive a short horror story straight to your inbox as a thank you. You can also find me on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook, all the links are below and please feel free to subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thanks very much guys and I'll see you next week.